My name is Allison Barth. I'm a professor in the Department of Biological Sciences at Carnegie Mellon. There are millions and millions of neurons in the cerebral cortex that all have specialized functions. And I've become really interested in how we can um, take this pool, this enormous pool of neurons, and identify what each one of them is doing and how their activity then enables change between the connections between these cells to encode our experience and to underline learning and memory. We've been able to identify different phases of learning and we've been able to identify the biochemical and molecular correlates of these different phases so that we can see right after some experience synapses are, are strengthened but then they enter into sort of a labile state. I think understanding these different phases gives us the opportunity to potentially manipulate um, the conditions of these different phases to prolong, to erase memory, for example, or to um, uh, extend the duration um, or strengthen memories. It's not just learning and memory. There are diseases, for example, like um, epilepsy, where abnormal circuit function becomes um, reinforced through a recurrent um, abnormal activity. And it's very um, likely that the work that we're doing will inform some of those pathological changes that can occur in brain function. And I think by understanding the principles by which circuits are organized, we'll actually be able to develop and design um, engineered circuits that can carry out some of these functions. There's a lot of biological insight that I think can help computer science and engineering in developing um, better tools that will improve our existence as humans. We use the somatosensory cortex of rodents as sort of a platform for understanding how experience can transform neural circuits. And so we can use it to ask really fundamental questions about how memories are encoded in the brain. We're using features of our experience, of our life experience, and they're somehow changing in some permanent way or very long-lasting way, the circuits in our brain. Recently, we've become really interested in um, developing anatomical techniques where which we can classify every single synapse type amongst the 20 to 40 different types of neurons that occur in the cerebral cortex. And so uh, we'd like to develop a directory by which we know exactly how many contacts there are between this type of genetically specified neuron and this other type of genetically specified neuron. Developing labeling techniques where pre and postsynaptic cells are labeled and then we can count actually in real numbers the number of contacts between each type of cell and then monitor those contacts as the animal learns some sort of task. So we'd like to be able to dig into the anatomy instead of looking in general at it, ask very specific questions about who's talking to whom. I believe that the neural substrates for learning and memory will be very stereotyped. And I believe that we'll be able to see, to identify when an animal learns, for example, a task, or when we have some perceptual experience that's really encoded in a, in a long-lasting way, that we'll be able to identify the cells and synapses that have participated in that memory. There's a lot of things that this sort of cellular and molecular analysis of, of memory can inform.